Hey, it's Anne. Welcome back to my channel. And if you don't know me, I'm Anne. I'm normally a personal trainer with an obsession for nail polish making. <laughs> yes, that's true. I make nail polish and sell it on Etsy. Never mind. And I'm here for virtually anything which interests me. And today the subject is Pink's hips. According to this expert, Pink's hips are not childbearing. And he was joined by a lot of other experts on Twitter who supported his incredible theory. According to this interesting person, it is virtually impossible for women to get an Adonis belt. Pink has to be a man. Other people joined and said, I always thought that Pink was transgender. I don't know what it is, but Pink must be A, a man, or B, a transgender, because it is virtually impossible for someone who has an Adonis belt to be female. Now, today we're going to find out if that's correct. Is it really virtually impossible for a woman to have an Adonis belt? No, it's absolutely possible. She was saying if a woman is under 15%, she cannot have children and therefore it is impossible for her to have any. Now what this user didn't realize is that people can change their body fat and it's actually very easy towards the upwards department, meaning if you want to be higher in your body fat, especially as female, for us it's quite easy to do. We just sit more and eat more and by miracle we pile up the pounds. Happens to me all the time. So it's actually more difficult for me to keep them down rather than having them up and I'm pretty sure that when Pink decided to have children she probably also went up in her body fat. What you see here is Pink in her peak fitness and a peak body fat and obviously when she decided to be pregnant and was pregnant she probably had a different body fat. What a surprise, people can change their bodies. Yes, women can totally have an Adonis belt if they're trained in a certain way. Now you're obviously saying, why well, Anna, I've seen people with six packs and they have a really small waist. Yes, of course. Because they don't train for performance, they train for looks. I, for example, I train my abs for looks and that's why I have a small waist and a six pack. Well, if you train your abs for performance, meaning they need to be super strong and they need to perform for something hardcore acrobatic, then you don't care how small your waistline is and your external obliques, those fancy muscles on the side, might actually grow. And yes, it happens to females as well. You see it on athletes all the time, especially on athletes on acrobats, because they train their muscles for performance and not looks. And as Pink happens to be a hardcore, super well-trained acrobat, we've seen it many times with her on stage, she needs those insane and well-developed and fantastic external obliques to perform those acrobatics and therefore she has them. Does that have any impact on her hips? No, because these are her external obliques. They sit around the waist. The hips stay the same. If you either have a small waist or big waist, the hips are still childbearing and feminine. They are not as noticeable on her because of her larger external obliques, yet they're still there. And she has proven in the past that they're very functional because she actually has two children. And now something personal for me. I get quite angry when I see comments like this, which are based on nothing. Because if you had knowledge about anatomy, you would know that these hips and that Adonis belt and those external obliques are absolutely possible on a woman. These are my two cents. Bye bye. See you in the next video.